rifles and some uh, handguns, uh, M11 Cobra, if y'all know what that is. And we shot this Second Amendment video. Now, I'm 43 years old, and my mother looked at this video, and she goes, oh, my goodness, Howard. She goes, I think people may take that the wrong way. And I was telling this story to Mr. Pratt, and he just very matter-of-fact place, he said, I'll guarantee you that all of those guns combined killed less people than Ted Kennedy's car. It was very matter-of-fact, he didn't crack a smile, and I knew right then that when they say that the gun owners of America is the no-compromise, no-nonsense gun lobby, and they ain't joking, it's serious. Now, to tell you that to make the point that that is the type of citizen legislators that we need to install to represent you in Washington, D.C. No nonsense, no compromise. They have to stand by their principles no matter what, just like the Gun Owners of America does. I'm also a member of Gun Owners of America, and I happen to be a new member of the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association. Uh, a lot of times I, I have to follow Randy Brogdon over in District 2 when, when he comes to speak, and, and it's always easy for me to follow Randy because his view of the Second Amendment and state sovereignty, and I, we see eye to eye on that. And I think it would be really neat, and Nathan Dom spoke of, uh, about this earlier, it would be really neat to have someone in Washington that really, really wants to work for true state sovereignty and have government function the way it was intended to function. And that is from the bottom up, not from the top down. Does anybody think that Mr. Blue Dog himself, Dan Boren, would want that? His voting record doesn't show it. The uh, Restoring Oklahoma Public Education, ROPE, R-O-P-E. I spoke with her back here about 10 months ago. Uh, I'm a contributing author to uh, Canada Free Press, World Net Daily, American Daily Review as well. And I, I, I used to do a lot of writing, but the campaign kind of took over that. But I wrote an article about nine or ten months ago. It was called ROPE, R-O-P-E. And that stood for the Reed, Obama, Pelosi, and Enablers. We have a lot of en enablers that are supposedly representing the citizens of this great nation in Washington. Dan Boren is an enabler, without a doubt. But just because we were given that rope does not mean we have to hang ourselves with it. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing that you will not hear Dan Boren talk about, as a matter of fact, the very first time I ever heard Mitt Romney used the words constitutional and conservatism together in the same sentence was uh, at CPAC here uh, recently in February. I attended that. And it's through efforts like this and the pressure that the citizens are putting on the legislators in Washington that made Rip Mitt Romney use the word constitutional conservatism together. He would have never done that had it not been for people like you. When you take people that truly believe that our founding documents that were inspired by our Creator, and our Creator gave us those, in our un those unable rights, those founding principles that birthed, molded, and defined our American character, we need citizen legislators that hold that in their heart, that truly believe that in their soul. And ladies and gentlemen, that American character is what makes America great, is what tells us and what makes us understand what American exceptionalism is. American exceptionalism is not that we are better than anybody else. It is that we are truly exceptional. We are different. We get our rights from our Creator, not from government. Those are fundamental philosophical differences between most every one of us here and those legislators that supposedly represent us. I looked around and you see a lot of young children here, younger kids. 
And what we are doing now, is you have to be realistic about this. It's not for me, 43, 25. There's something innate in human nature. Throughout the history of civilized man, we have strove to make something better for future generations. That's the way it always is. We've stumbled in that respect. In order for the continuation of the greatness of America, the greatest nation God ever blessed, we have to make this country better for that young man right there, for this young lady over here. And we're not doing that by forcing over $40,000 in bills before they're even born on them. They're part of the national debt. No, we can't do that. It's time for sanity and common sense. I was just speaking with some gentlemen over here earlier. And truthfully, in 2010, if we do not immediately start enacting Thatcher-like spending cuts, and even more than the Reagan-like cuts of the 80s, and corporate and personal income taxes, ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America will go the way of Rome, and there will be no reversal. Will Dan Born work and fight for that? He got you to hold up a sign while ago. There was a sign back here uh, that said something about the fabric of America. It said, we're not fringe, we are the fabric of America. and those enablers have done since this ruling regime came into power has been designed to tear at the fabric of the greatest nation God ever blessed and I will not stand for that. Don't yeah. listen to me long enough. I've got, by, by the way, over in eastern Oklahoma, they know me as the firebrand Republican and they, they tell me, they say, you know, you, you need to calm down. You don't need to be so angry. Well, I think... Most every one of you out here were angry at one point. You're probably angry right now, and I get pretty angry too. I've got a right to be mad because my government has abandoned me. My name is Howard Houchin. You can go to houchinforcommerce.com or h2-ok.com. Thank every one of you for listening to this, and God bless America.